just wanted to um, welcome you all uh, to this event. And we're so excited to have you all as part of Austin Design Week. Um, you know, we're really excited that you guys can all be here. My name is Candace Digby. I'm the co-founder of Austin Design Week, and I also lead up our programming team and our partnerships teams. Um, so you can connect with us and share your experiences over the week by tagging us on social media. We hope you will. Um, screenshot this event if you're into it. Give us some takeaways. We'd love it. Keep the conversation going. Um, speaking of that, if you haven't joined the Slack workspace, hopefully you guys all have by now, but that's a great place to continue the conversation as well. And we also have a help desk channel um, that the volunteer will be putting all these links in the chat for you all. So you can click on that if you have any issues. Um, and then also just want to say a big thank you to our sponsors this year who are so important for putting this on. Um, and the only reason that we can make ADW happen year after year. So we really, really appreciate them. Um, and then finally, last thing, and I'm out, I promise, uh, at the end of the event, you'll be asked to take a really brief survey. It's super quick, but it really helps us know what you like, what you didn't, what we can improve on. Um, and it really gives your hosts and speakers great feedback. So please fill that out. Um, they will drop that again in the chat. So just definitely check out that chat and make sure that you're um, up to date. Uh, and now I'm going to pass it over to, I believe, Viviana, who's going to get us started. Yes, thank you very much. Let me share my screen. I think you have to stop sharing before I can. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thanks you guys for joining us. Uh, we've been having some minor technical difficulties, so we're gonna have to kind of run with what we have. Um, but thanks so much for joining. I'm Viviana Trevino. I'm a designer at PAGE and I lead the Design Voice Committee uh, with the American Institute of, Ar of Architects chapter here in Austin. Chet, Hi, would you I'm, like to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, my name is Chet Morgan and I'm a project architect at Perkins & Will and I'm the chair elect for Design Voice. Um, so yeah, thanks again for joining us. Um, today we'll be talking about uh, really awesome social booths um, and some uh, student programs that have kind of transitioned from something we uh, had before. Um, there we go. Um, so yeah, so I'll go through the agenda really quick. So we'll just give a background kind of on what this program is. It's a new one. It's kind of a, a riff on uh, a program that we usually do uh, in, in the non-pandemic times. Um, and so it's, it's fun and, and exciting that we're still able to do something that involves students and design. Uh, and architecture. Uh, so we'll talk about that, our partnership with Alzheimer's Texas and Workforce Solution. Uh, and then we'll give each group uh, around eight minutes to talk through each of their designs and their presentations. And we're excited to see what they have to present. And then uh, the next uh, one quick plug on Design Voice too. So Design Voice uh, is basically the, uh, the arm of the AA Austin that uh, unites professionals with community members to give back their design uh, services or just to help out wherever needed. Uh, and so if that, and so we do a bunch of programs like this DV three by two, which we'll talk in a second, uh, and just a bunch of outreach programs. So if you're interested, live in Austin, or just want to get involved, uh, our meetings are on the fourth Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. Alrighty. Um, so one of the programs that we have with Design Voice is called the DV three by two program. It's an internship program for high school students in the local Austin community. And um, it's for students that are interested in the architecture, engineering, construction industry. Uh, it's a week-long program in the summer. And so with COVID, we kind of had to reinvent and cancel and reimagine kind of what we were doing this year. Um, the purpose of the program is for students to go into design offices and get to uh, shadow professionals. And so obviously because of COVID, we had to rethink how that was going to work out. And um, the awesome people at um, Alzheimer's Texas reached out to us. So it kind of worked out really well um, because um, there was kind of a need in the community for these social booths uh, for people living in senior living facilities to, to have. And we also had this ongoing internship program that we had to uh, unfortunately cancel in the summertime. So it was a great way for us to partner together um, and allow students to kind of continue having those, um, those mentorship opportunities and those kinds of projects. Um, so a quote that has been um, just really important to us this whole year for Design Voice is this quote. So architects facilitate 
interaction, create gathering places and build communities. What then is the appropriate design response to a health crisis that requires physically separating people? Um, so what we did is um, Alzheimer's Texas reached out to us and they were looking for uh, basically just uh, these booths that they could place at senior living facilities in central Texas and also rural areas around Texas. And so they're, they're really um, simple structures. They're, um, most of them are five by five, they vary by design. Um, and so we asked, we kind of called different uh, groups, different student groups and teachers around Austin and asked if they would be interested in participating. Um, so the program this year has seven student groups comprised of four to five students and each group has a mentor, which has been really helpful um, because they have been leading the students in the design um, and just guiding them through the process. Um, and I'll let um, Catherine and Ron talk a little bit about Alzheimer's Texas and also um, Leslie Puckett with Workforce Solutions. Excellent. Thank you, Viviana. I'm Catherine Campbell, the Executive Director of Alzheimer's Texas. We're so glad to be here today. Our mission here at Alzheimer's Texas is to provide help and support to individuals with Alzheimer's, their caregivers and families. And when COVID hit, we we really wanted to reimagine how we were providing that help and support. And by partnering on this project, we could make an immediate impact. This is our love letter to these individuals that need human connection. So hits all of our goals of reducing social isolation, getting into the rural communities. And best news is we just received a grant from AFA to help build and duplicate these and continue as long as the, the pandemic exists, but we're, we're super excited to be here and listen to all the students' projects. And my name is Ron Morelli. I'm the Director of Constituent Relations here at Alzheimer's Texas, which means I'm the one that reaches out to these care facilities throughout Central Texas and in rural areas and kind of sees what do they need. And we kind of got on the bandwagon reading an article in a newspaper in like Tennessee about how care facilities were erecting these visitation booths for the residents to have a safe space to actually connect with their family members. And it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, Austin's a pretty hip cutting edge place. If like Tennessee can have this, then we for sure can do this. And then we can for sure can make like something much better than what we were seeing in this Tennessee newspaper. And I just have to say, looking at the blueprints and the photographs I've seen so far from like last night and this morning, it's like, I am just amazed. I'm just, as Catherine had said, you know, these are more than just like sticks and bricks and like roofs and windows. These, they truly are love letters, these booths. These booths are the physical representation of sonnets. Because when I think of the individuals who will be able to connect with their family members, especially during the holiday season, which they couldn't have because of COVID-19 restrictions, which are particularly hitting rural areas um, tremendously with this newest phase. It just, it fascinates and it warms my heart. And if anyone actually knows me, they know it takes a lot to actually warm my heart. So this is like, you know, pretty much moved me. And a quick little statistics, it's like we've already spoken to three rural facilities. So that's gonna be 210 individuals that we helped by these booths. Um, a little interesting math factoid is that talking to like a care facilitator, she said, when you help like one person, you're really helping seven. So in that case, you know, the statistic is 1,470 individuals helped, which I'm completely fine with because that's actually 900 less than the population of Liberty Hills, Texas. So I am just amazingly pleased. And that's just three booths. It's like, we've got like more of these booths being designed here. And so I am just, amazed at the lives that will be saved because of this, because one of the leading causes of death for individuals with dementia tends to be like loneliness because of this isolation thing. If they can't interact with individuals, they get lonely, they get withdrawn, and they have a quicker rate of demise. So to all the students and to the facilitators and to AIA and to Workforce, workforce Solutions, it's like you, have literally saved lives. And no matter what happens this entire week, this entire month, or for the rest of 2020, 
just know that you have actually saved the lives of individuals in rural areas. So put that on your resume. Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Puckett with Workforce Solutions Capital Area. Um, if you're not familiar with the Workforce Board system, um, there's 28 Workforce Boards in the state of Texas, and my organization serves Travis County. And um, we've been so thrilled to be part of this um, project. Um, I was brought in by Viviana um, to help with the student outreach, and so um, we really reached out to some of the the high schools in our region to see if any of their construction students would be interested in participating in this project. And I'm so excited that um, some of them were able to participate. Um, AISD, Maynard, KIPP, um, and then we're working with American Youth Works as well, as well as some other school districts. And um, through a generous uh, grant that Workforce Solutions received from Texas Mutual, um, the um, workers' comp insurance company, um, we were able to provide um, stipends to the students that participate in this project. Um, we're considering it an unpaid internship, so we're supplementing with stipends for them. So glad to be part of this. Thanks, Leslie. And just to talk a little bit more about the program before we get into the student presentations, um, it, it really truly is the best partnership between, between the three organizations. Um, I think Design Voice brings you know, kind of the, the student program part of it. Alzheimer's Texas is our client essentially. So we're providing these uh, architectural solutions for them and the people living at the senior uh, living facilities. They also um, provided the funding for uh, building the booths. And so that was really, really helpful. Um, the student groups, um, you know, that didn't have to come out of their pocket. So that came out of Alzheimer's Texas. And like Leslie said, Workforce Solutions, um, as long as the, the student groups successfully complete the program, each student will receive a $500 stipend. So, um, you know, it, it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, I, I know I would have liked to have something like this when I was growing up to get that experience and also just the extra money. Um, so yeah, that, that was a really great partnership. Uh, something I didn't mention earlier, so the, the program consists of the students designing the booths, but also building the booths. And so um, each student group has had kind of a specific situation dealing with COVID. Some students are not uh, attending school in person at, at all, and some are. And so uh, all of us with the program have had to be really flexible with um, just how everything is going because you know everything's kind of up in the air. And so um, luckily, uh, most of the student groups have been able to build the booths themselves. And those that have not, uh, we're currently working with builders that will be able to supplement that um, and work with the students virtually. So I wanted to mention that. Okay, um, we're gonna get into the student presentations. Um, so I know Kelly Foster is probably on the call and I see him on the call. Um, unfortunately, um, we had some technical things happen. Um, so he is not gonna be able to talk, uh, which I truly, truly apologize. Um, I will uh, do my best to um, relay their concept and their information. And Kelly, um, if you would like to chat on the chat, uh, feel free to. Again, I, I really apologize for this. Um, so. This is the Cedar Ridge High School team um, led by Kelly Foster. Um, it's comprised of four students. Um, they, when I met with them, it was uh, truly kind of a unique design. Um, it's centered around kind of a Z concept. And can you guys see my cursor? Yes, okay. Um, it's centered around a Z concept. So these uh, walls in the middle are fixed and the other walls around the Z can actually move. And so what this provides is just a flexibility of openness and enclosure um, based on the person in the booth and how comfortable they are, um, how, you know, being super enclosed um, as, as opposed to being more open. Uh, something that the team considered was also built-in elements. Um, so having the, you see the circular kind of table in the middle, uh, just so that they can, um, you know, 
play a board game or have lunch together um, while they're looking through the glass. So the idea is with this booth is that the person in, in the um, living facility is on one side and their visitors are on the other side. And uh, let's see, one second. Um, Kelly's saying something on the chat. I wanna make sure he gets what uh, he said. The students also wanted to make the spaces equal for people on each side. So it felt like one person was confined. Um, and I know when we discussed this together, um, one thing that was kind of a challenge was the roof because these, um, these walls out here are, are, are movable. Um, they were considering kind of a fixed roof, um, but that's something we talked about, um, just how that, that would work out. Um, Kelly, is there anything before I move on to the next slide that I can add? Uh, if you can type in the chat. Okay, I will move on to the next slide. Um, so these are the students um, that have been designing the booth. Um, I know when I first reached out to Kelly, they were kind of hesitant to take the project on because they didn't want uh, they didn't want it to to make it look kind of like a visitation uh, jail booth that they truly didn't want to do that. So I think Kelly encouraged them to design it in such a way that was inviting and that it didn't seem that way um, because we wanted to make the both the visitor and the person living at the senior living facility comfortable um, and not feel you know like they're trapped. And so that was, I know, a big um, driver in their design. So here's kind of that uh, Z concept I was mentioning. Uh, the middle is glass. Um, it has plexiglass kind of in the upper, um, the upper section. Um, when I last talked to them, it was most of the structure uh, was comprised of wood. Um, and then the, the, I know the roof structure, they were still talking about that. Um, I know originally they used SketchUp. Um, so they modeled their design in SketchUp and worked out kind of how they wanted it to look. And then they transferred over to Rhino. Um, I believe uh, Kelly leads this studio at Cedar Ridge and they have, um, he's versed in these kinds of programs. So he was able to uh, teach the students kind of how to go back and forth between different programs and, and how to use them. Let's see, let me see if I'm missing anything from Kelly in the chat. Uh, he said, I have five students that have taken architecture classes for three years. They're all seniors and are excited to see their design built. Um, they started in SketchUp and developed lots of ideas. And then Rhino let them get dimensions more precise and do more sophisticated rendering and modeling. So these um, renderings that you see on the screen, um, I believe are coming out of Rhino. Um, and then I think another thing before we move on from this group, um, we talked a lot about um, how the tables and uh, items inside the booths, how they could be uh, operable or used in different ways. So having the ability to flatten them and having the ability to prop them, op uh, prop them up to be able to use them. Um, I know that was a, a really uh, something they considered. Okay, before I move on, um, Kelly, is there anything I can, I can add um, if you can say through the chat? Again, I'm sorry you couldn't. You guys couldn't speak. I really wish you guys could have. Uh, he's saying these are showing the interior spaces. The different plexiglass panels allow for different ways of interaction. Next, they'll build a model using a laser cutter as they begin construction. And so um, I believe they haven't, um, if they have started construction, they're early on in the process, um, but they, they're uh, starting the construction process. So thanks Kelly and, and your team. I um, appreciate your flexibility and I appreciate um, all of your work. Really, really great work. Okay, um, Elise Bowman, uh, would you like to take it out, off from here? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Elise Bachman. I teach at McCallum High School. Um, due to some technical difficulties, the student, uh, Laszlo, who is supposed to um, present alongside me today isn't able to um, join this call. Um, but we've spent a lot of time going over their different designs. 
So we are attacking this from a whole class. Um, I have a class of 20 engineering students. Um, and so we turned this into an internal competition with the class being divided into four groups, each working to create and submit designs. So we're actually um, in the middle of our semi-final selection. So I have a um, panel of administrators, teachers at the school, uh, and Viviana looking at their most recent submissions and the top two will get built with uh, those two going on to a whole campus voting for um, best design. Um, so we're really trying to get the whole campus involved um, and kind of turn this into hopefully some blueprints from the winning design so that if other facilities wanted to build these as well, they would have a uh, manual to create that. Um, so this is um, Laszlo's group design, uh, Team Rugrats. Uh, they had fun with the team names. Uh, they created this booth um, around the central idea um, of having dinner together. So uh, it's not reflected on these sketches here, but their goal was to make this feel very home-like on the inside with um, a nice table that extends on both sides so that they could again enjoy, enjoy meals together um, with those who are coming to visit. Um, and we haven't started building these yet. I, I'm so sorry, my email's going off. Um, once we um, have our semi-finalists, these will move on to the next stage. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to add here. Um, oh, the students have been all virtual. We have not had any of these students on campus at this time. Um, for the build process, we're going through some special channels so that the students can build these themselves. Um, but I was really impressed with the teamwork that they've done over Zoom, creating of group chats and um, assigning roles to their different group members to help create these. Um, and then I'm gonna just show off some of the other designs as well. Um, so here are some images of the design process. So I've got one of my groups uh, in Zoom collaborating and we used a mixture of um, CAD, AutoCAD, SketchUp, and we even had students, you can see in the bottom right, um, do some actual sketches of their designs. Um, and so they all kind of center around um, having an area to play games, whether it's using dry erase on the plexiglass, um, providing board games to the care facilities to store inside um, these social booths. Um, the one in the bottom right they added a porch swing for the visitors so they can hang out on the porch um, while talking to their loved ones. Um, and so here, uh, this is Knights of the Socially Distanced Round Table. Um, most current sketch uh, in uh, SketchUp and in AutoCAD. I'm just gonna go th <laughs> uh, through each one. Um, this is Team Breakout. They also went for um, the house look, um, trying to again replicate a home versus a um, plywood booth, which was some of the ones when they were doing their research. I mentioned the ones I think in Tennessee, they found some of those and they were just plywood boxes. Um, and again, trying to make it feel like a very comfortable place to sit and have a conversation. And then including by or an extension of the roof to go over um, visitors. So if there is any inclement weather, um, those who are visiting are still protected. Elise, can you talk a little bit about um, how the process will work um, with the voting of, your, of the school and, and picking a favorite? Oh, absolutely. So um, the goal is to begin um, building this Wednesday. And so we only have class like every other day um, and students will come up and build. Once we have our final designs, um, we have a whole campus um, learning management system. So we will submit images and display for any students who are choosing to learn on campus, we'll display the booths here so students can see them um, or check out the pictures and videos that'll be posted on their campus wide system. And students will vote through and teachers will vote through a Google form for their favorite. That sounds really fun. Um, one thing also I wanted to ask you is, I know you were uh, using 
you were doing this with all of your class. So you had different groups working on different booths. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, I guess how each design varies from each other or how they are similar, if you noticed any kind of trends with that. Um, yeah, so the students I have, this is their fourth year, um, but this is my first time working with them and my first time teaching. Um, they are very functionality driven and uh, budget conscious. I was actually so incredibly <laughs> impressed with um, how meticulous they were in keeping that budget um, so that they could build this and they wanted to leave themselves room for as they build to make further modifications. Um, so they all did end up, because they would design in, in breakout rooms. So they weren't really cross talking a whole lot until they had a firm design when they gave each other feedback, but they did go for the functionality of trying to maximize um, that footprint. So they would look up ADA regulations to make sure wheelchairs would fit through the doors, that there was enough room for somebody who might be um, a CNA or nurse at the facility to walk in, get the wheelchair situated and get them out. Um, so yeah, it was kind of interesting to see them all come together and become very similar. Um, the porch swing was a really neat addition um, to the booth, uh, taking into more of a consideration, well, if it's me visiting, where am I gonna go um, from the high school perspective? Nice, yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed seeing kind of the different uh, designs because I know you're doing many groups. So that was really fun. Um, do you have anything else to add, Elise, before we move on? Um, this has been a great opportunity, but um, it actually opened up lots of really great conversations about Alzheimer's. Um, and some kids did some research. So um, part of, and I almost forgot to mention this, part of the school-wide voting, we're hoping to have a segment that educates the campus on Alzheimer's as well. So that there's the voting component and the educational component, because this is something that's uh, near and dear to my heart from personal experience. Um, so it was nice getting to share that with the students as well, since we're all getting to know each other virtually this year. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Elise. All right, next we have American Youth Works. Hi, I'm Brianna Elise Hernandez. I'm the construction training coordinator for American Youth Works, uh, our youth build program, which uh, helps young adults, uh, young students uh, gain job skills and earn their education at the same time. Um, so this is our design. Um, we went with the open concept. We were trying to create visibility uh, through acrylic or plexiglass as, as many places as we could. Come to find out it's actually pretty pricey for, for that material. So it was really awesome to see the students take on um, all these sort of roles that you would in a construction project from being a construction manager, figuring out the materials, budgeting, designing. We got to play a role in all sorts of um, those aspects. So. Um, my team is consisted of myself, Jonathan Gonzalez, Calista Vallarte, and Sarah Ponce de Leon. Um, due to technical issues, they're also not here to speak, so I will speak on their behalf. But this is kind of an overall uh, view of our, of our booth. You can see the different sides. Um, we're in the process of construction right now, um, so I can go ahead with the presentation if you thought that. Okay. So step one was educating ourselves about what Alzheimer's is. We ingrained, I ingrained into our curriculum, uh, some investigative research on Alzheimer's and its effects on people, symptoms. We just really took some time to dedicate, uh, dedicated some time to learn about this. This project actually so perfectly aligned with our type of service that we bring to the community throughout all of our projects. We're always looking for some way to serve our community and it was just you know, so amazing that we got lined up with this. So um, educating ourselves was, was priority number one so we could get, see the bigger picture of things and understand our audience and then uh, build from there. Um, so we, we designed online um, with SketchUp. Uh, the AIA team was really helpful in making us realize how this would be a possibility. Every one of us was new to uh, online designing. We used SketchUp. 
uh, every member, you know, started from ground from ground zero point zero on, on learning this, then we kind of just took off with it. Um, we watched YouTube tutorials, we played with um, different shapes that we could create. Chet hosted an online tutorial for us that we just had a lot of fun with. So we learned in, in a lot of different ways and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, really impressed with the skill level that the students have progressed to at this point. Uh, Brianna Lise, I have a question for you before we move on to the next slide. Sure. Um, so I, uh, you said uh, each student kind of designed their own before uh, you all designed together. Uh, how did the how did that work, or how did you guys uh, combine ideas to come up with one solution rather than four? We kind of just picked the best aspects from each one. We all had actually kind of similar design. Um, we were just trying to. Uh, figure out what was needed, what we thought would fit best for for this booth, and just we all liked the open design. We all decided that there needed to be some sort of engagement um, between the visitor and the resident. And so those are some of those like random circles and squares and things that you might be able to see there. Um, so yeah, really just coming together, looking at them, taking some time to decide what we wanted from each one of them. Awesome. So we spent a lot of time, the school year is still online and we've been just fortunate enough that our school campus is open to, to meet in person, but we spent a lot of the beginning time uh, talking, discussing, planning online. And, and then we finally got to meet in person, which was awesome. Uh, luckily, we have a graduate construction crew uh, who was already running a construction crew in person so it made the transition really easy for us as far as um, having COVID protocols in place, what we were going to sanitize things with, how we were sanitizing. It was just a really awesome um, effort by our organization to make a safe place for us to go ahead and build in person. Um, so even though we spent all this time designing online, when we got to meet in person for the first time, all of us went to pencil and and graph paper because we just wanted to go back to the drawing board and you know make everything precise and we had a lot of fun uh, drawing on uh, in that way as well. So we've begun the construction. Um, we're we've framed some walls. It's been a while since we've back, been back to the campus, you know, since March. So it was definitely a time to brush up on our construction skills, making sure everyone uh, remembered all their sixteenths and measuring and cutting and using all the tools. Uh, as safely as possible while maintaining our cultural distancing, while making sure we're sanitizing everything. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, here's one of the walls that we've, we've created. Um, and we're continuing the build. So um, we've got, I believe we've got four walls and the floor built. So it's all just got to come together now. It's been really awesome to see this point where this project was just like in our heads to where it's like, wow, this is real. We're building it, we're putting it together. We're cutting, we're nailing, and uh, we're really excited to um, to finish it out and just see how it turns out. Um, and just special shout out to all of the people who have helped us. We've got a team of uh, construction staff members who are busy with their own projects, but you know we'll lend a helping hand at year. Um, and our construction graduate crew who who does the same. So we're really appreciative of all the help that has gone into into helping make this a reality. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you before we move on also is, um, did you discover anything uh, going from design and starting to build? Did you discover that some things that you had thought um, weren't quite working when you started to build them? Yes, we definitely did. And that's kind of where we learned we liked 3D modeling a little bit better as because we had to you know, scrap some drawings more than once. Um, but yeah, yeah, we decided to change up our roof. We decided to change the pitch of it. We decided to um, make our door bigger and just little things like that we found along the way. Just while we were building, we were very much still designing. You know, it's not like we had this one final, this is design, this is it. You kind of learn things as you go, um, at least for it, in our experience, that's kind of how it's gone. So yes, very much so we're, we're changing as we go, uh, but for the better, we're learning. Uh, seeing how things will fit, seeing how siding will attach to certain studs and deciding what orientation is best. And, and those sort of things have definitely played a role in shaping our final design. 
thanks, Brian Elise. Um, we did have an audience, and I see Ron answered, but uh, they were asking what budget were the students working with, and I think we said, uh, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars. Just please don't go over a thousand dollars. And I think everyone's been really um, budget conscious. So, all right, Crockett High School with Colin. There we go. Hi. Um, so my name is Colin Bugey and I'm the construction teacher here at Crockett. Um, I have a couple of my students here. Uh, they'll introduce themselves and tell you about what we've been doing. Hi, I'm Morgan. Um, uh, I, I've been, I'm a sophomore. Uh, uh, I've been in the construction program since last year. Um, and it's been really great to uh, finally get to uh, be able to use the tools and uh, get a, a project that um, uh, that's, I guess, different because we didn't really do anything last year. And this is probably our first major project um, of this year and possibly our only major project of this year. I'm Jessica. I'm a junior. I've been in class since freshman year. Yeah, so um, Caden is another person in our group, uh, and so he has been, um, he kind of is the brainchild of our design. Um, they, uh, Caden wanted to do a design that um, could be used after COVID is over, so um, they, the students kind of decided on a hexagon sort of uh, gazebo style uh, building. So Morgan, do you want to tell more about the process? Yeah, so uh, we've been using SketchUp. Uh, this is our first year using SketchUp. Um, uh, it, we, we went through a couple different renditions. I think originally um, we had uh, like six or seven designs, but then we narrowed it down to uh, just just one. Um, and we all agreed on it, and uh, it, a big part of it was, yeah, being able to um, uh, use it after COVID. Um, and it's it's modular, so it, right now, I don't know, you can see you one. Can on a tour. Okay, so you can see one half of it right there, and then the other half is right here, and we're working on that now. Um, uh, but. Uh, so it's modular, and then right in the middle, we'll have a uh, um, a plexiglass uh, divider. Uh, so it it is a little bit different from the design you see on the screen now. Uh, the design you have now is plexiglass all around, um, but we decided to switch it up uh, so that the um, person visiting their loved one at the uh, nursing home could uh, also be under a roof, um, just in case there was uh not very pleasant weather um but yeah you can see we're working on it right now it's a kind of a gazebo type uh design um and yeah I, I, both of my great grandparents had alzheimer's so it's it's nice to be able to um uh kind of give back to that uh community i guess um because uh they definitely helped a lot when they were when they had alzheimer's too so that's, that's it. Yeah, so here are a few uh, pictures of um, the construction process. Um, we're kind of doing it a little bit like, uh, uh, I think, youth works, where we're kind of like designing and building at the same time. Um, it kind of helps to get the spatial awareness and like a, a good, uh, I guess, uh, kinest kinesthetic feel um for for designing because it you, it's hard to know exactly how big it is until you can step inside it so um i'm really proud of uh the students um they've been coming in on uh you know flex fridays and stuff like that to to get it done so i'm, I'm really excited to see the finished product thanks guys um i was curious and i i may have missed this um but so uh, can you explain a little bit more why you're building like two separate sections? Um, is it so that they can like kind of uh, come apart? 
I think it was mainly because of uh, transportation, because we weren't really sure how it's going to get out of uh, our like construction warehouse, and uh, we didn't know what was going to be used to transport it. So we we're trying to think of uh, things that could maybe possibly fit into a truck bed. Um, maybe not fully but strapped down and it could probably fit into a truck bed so um yeah awesome and then can you also talk a little bit about um maybe why you decided to have kind of uh flex like uh plexiglass all around the structure so we actually decided uh I i'm not sure if you heard this that we did we were gonna kind of use the basic uh structure of that design but we changed it a little bit to where um, you can see that it looks like the bottom half of the gazebo, uh, the walls are kind of like closed off. Right now we're building, um, uh, we have these, what are they called? Uh, we've been calling them all kinds of different things, patrons. Yeah, you, so as you can see, we're gonna uh, start building more of like a, I guess, traditional gazebo. Um, How about the plexiglass? Yeah, but yeah, the plexiglass that we're going to have is going to be in the middle and um, uh, it'll be able to come out after uh, COVID and uh, the two sides won't just be floating around. They'll be um, uh, uh, bolted together and then w once COVID is over, you can take them out and get, remove the plexiglass and then put them back together. Um, awesome. But uh yeah, the, there's not going to be plexiglass all around. It's just going to be right in the middle. And then you're going to have more of like a traditional gazebo. I see. Um, also, one thing I wanted to point out with y'all's group is you mentioned when I met with you, um, you were asking, where is this booth going? Like what senior living facility? Because we want to know what kind of colors they have and what kind of building it looks like. Um, so I know you guys asked about that and, and Ron was able to identify where this is actually going. Um, so have you guys talked about that further, like how it could um, correlate or go with its environment? Uh, yeah, we right now we're pretty much uh, set on uh, having a, a navy blue metal roof and then um, like an all white uh, exterior, so we'll paint it white, and then we're gonna have yeah, like a, a navy blue metal roof. Maybe some green trim, which match the uh, the uh, retirement homes colors. Yeah, we heard that it was green and blue, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. green and blue. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I did want to extend uh, Ron, Catherine, Leslie, do you guys have any or anyone else? Do you have any other final remarks before we open it up to Q&A? I just wanted to mention, I forgot to mention in the introductions that um, I'm just so excited that this opportunity has been given to the high school students. I think it's a wonderful um, community project to work on. It's a huge need and also um, construction and architecture is um, an essential industry. Um, you know, it's been classified as that due to co you know, through COVID and it's a very strong industry. And I think it's wonderful that uh, young people are getting training um, in this industry so that they can get really good jobs once they graduate from high school. In all of Farmers, Texas, we're partnering with Removal Services of Texas. They're the ones actually be transporting these boots to their final destination. So we're very appreciative of what they do. And I'm just, you know, it's lovely. It is absolutely lovely. It's a great way to start with a Tuesday. And I just wanna reemphasize, thank you, Chet, Viviana, Leslie, for making this idea come to fruition. And I'm blown away by the students and their mentors and the ability to make this happen. And also, I love hearing about the educational component, and that is one of our other goals with this project is to educate multiple generations about the effects of Alzheimer's and the fact that the students took it on their own to do that. And um, with this grant that we're receiving from Alzheimer's Foundation of America, that is going to be a, a large component um, moving forward with educating younger generations. So that was, that was great to hear as well. Thanks, Catherine. I think we have a question from Carrie in the in the audience. So will any of these booths be insulated to keep out the cold winter weather? Um, so I 
you know, that's something we talked about when we kind of kicked off the, the program. Um, and that was a aspiration. I think um, it has kind of progress to, I, I don't believe any of the of the booths are currently insulated. So they're mostly using um, the structure and the finished material uh, to kind of provide that. Um, and then number two, did the designers consider the way the plexiglass will muffle sound and make adjustments accordingly? Um, that's a good question. I don't, do, does, do any of the mentors, can any of the mentors maybe answer that? It's kind of a tough question. I'd say that we didn't necessarily consider that in our design, but um, as mentioned before, uh, we're designing and building. So that's something that we'll definitely take into consideration as we move forward. So thanks for that question. Uh, and the third question was how portable are these booths? Um, so I believe they're pretty portable. They're not uh, super big. Uh, I think the biggest booth that we have is the one uh, in, from Colin's team. Um, but like he said, it, it's split in half, so um, it's it's able to be transported. Um, Ron, can you maybe talk a little bit more about how that process will work? Of the transportation issues, or yes. yeah, how it's how are they going to be transported? So basically, as much as I know, is we've contacted this uh, service, and it's like they're like an actual moving service, and they specialize like they've got moving vans. Uh, it, if they, it can go in the back of their vans, they'll like they'll they will transport it. If they, if the booths have to be separated or something, and there's a little bit of like reconstruction, I believe they can do that as parts of their abilities with moving them. But based upon the size of the booths and the size of the moving trucks, I don't really see it's going to be too much of a problem getting them in the moving trucks and transporting them from point A to point B. Correct. And just to emphasize on that, Removal Services of Texas, they started their company on the sole basis of helping senior citizens move from their home to a senior facility. So they, they are well equipped with moving any of these projects and um, they can do that in a very easy manner. So happy to partner with them. Yeah. Um, and I think Kelly with the Cedar Ridge team, answered that question about the plexiglass. Um, he said, we ended up dividing their, the panels into smaller sections so uh, they could go with a thinner plexi for sound transmission. So there, there you go for that one. Um, is, are there any other questions from the audience that we can, uh, we can answer before we hop off? I don't see any other questions. I just wanted to ask real quick, um, since some of us are still building and designing, um, if there were any uh, suggestions or comments from any of the, um, you know, attendees, panelists, or other um, other participants. That's a great question. Yeah, we uh, if we encourage or uh, if you want to provide feedback, we're more than welcome to to listen to that. Um, I know one question that came up with some of the designs is if it had to be fully enclosed with a door um, kind of behind um, where people were entering. And I personally was not sure about that question or that answer. So I reached out to Ron and Catherine and they mentioned that it was okay to leave it open uh, from the back as long as kind of you had three sides uh, enclosing the person. Um, so I know some, some designs uh, have that. Uh, from summer for the gazebo design, is it supposed to be for two people, but only has one entrance? Um, no, there. So there's what you see back here is identical to the uh, the one that's behind you. Um, so there's going to be two entrances. It's designed for two people, but right there, right where he, right where uh, Mr. Beauty walked in. There's going to be right there. That's the one of the doors, and then on the other side, there's uh, another door. Uh, and a fold down ramp. Uh, yeah, in a, a ramp that's going to like fold down like a drawbridge, so uh, it's wheelchair uh, accessible. 
Um, Can ATX, thanks for attending Raul. He's asking, how are you planning for being able to hear across glass or plexiglass? That I'm not sure. I think it's. Um, I think you can speak across plexiglass, but that is something to kind of test out as the teams are building. Yeah, one thing that I noticed in a lot of designs too is that there's a lot of openness towards the top too, and, and that's going to allow for a lot of sound transmission to go through as well. So, the thinner the plexi will definitely help, but I think that there's chances for for sound transmission to happen through the glass. That's true. And um, for also for Collins team, one other question: Does the entrance able is the entrance able to withstand the patient's weight? Because based on the design, their elevation ramp to ease the patient to enter the gazebo. Uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty sturdy uh, it's base. It's got uh, two by fours on edge, and and then um, and then the ramp will uh, fold down, and that'll be also made out of similarly uh, sturdy material. We built. A side project for our um, trainer, our athletic trainer, we built a, we basically, she had some stairs that she had to go down that uh, to push the water for the um, athletes. And so we wanted to turn those stairs into a ramp. And so we built that. And so I think we'll, we'll uh, definitely we'll use a similar design. Yeah, we, we've, we've got our, our ramp prototype, um, pretty solid. Awesome. Um, well, I think um, if there's any other questions, feel free to put them on the chat. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, these designs will be featured on our social media pages um, through Instagram. So as they as the design or the construction process evolves, and once we get the finished product, we'll be putting um, putting them up there. Uh, it's hashtag AIA Design Voice. There's also uh, TXALZ for Texas Alzheimer's. And Leslie, I, I'm blanking on Workforce Solutions, uh, their uh, Instagram. Sure, it's at wfscapitalarea.com or wfscapitalarea. Okay, um, well, thank you guys so much, all of the teams and all of the organizers for joining us. Um, I It's been kind of a very different year for us. So it was fun to kind of uh, work with all of you guys and and allow students these opportunities. So um, thanks again for, for working together with us. Really great work, everyone.